Hello. In this video series, I'm going to cover the process of building an indicator. The topic is quite deep and the data mine hierarchy is well documented, so I will try to focus on the how-to aspect and refrain from providing definitions or explanations that you may find elsewhere. Think of this video series as a complement to the written documentation, not a replacement. In fact, we're going to be consulting the docs as we move along. In this video, I will go through the process of creating the basic definitions in the design space. Before you keep going with this tutorial, please read the data mines and indicator bots pages in the docs to learn about the conceptual context of what we will be doing here. Let's start by creating a new data mine using the menu in the workspace node. It's always good practice to give relevant nodes a name and check the configuration file in case it needs some customization. So I'm going to name the data mine and give it a proper code name in the configuration. The video series will be about creating the MACD indicator. So let's create an indicator and do the same with its name and code name in the configuration. Notice that when I created the indicator, it came along with a structure of nodes consisting of the bare minimum definitions that make up an indicator. The definitions of a process and the definitions of a product. We'll start with the process definitions, but first I'll take a few seconds to arrange the notes in the way that I know works best for me. Indicators use processes to build datasets defined in product definitions. There usually are two separate processes, multi-period market and multi-period daily. We will define the multi-period market process and then reuse it to produce the definition of the multi-period daily process. As usual, I will name the node and check the configuration. The configuration for the market and daily processes are virtually the same. We just need to make sure we leave the proper code name and framework name, in this case, multi-period market. Okay, let's dive into the definition of the process. For the time being, we will leave the process output with a single output dataset. The output dataset must reference a dataset definition, but we will leave that for later as the dataset definitions are created at the level of the product and we haven't created them yet. Let's move on to the process dependencies. Here's where we need to start thinking about what is it that our indicator will do and how. In particular, we need to think about what other bots our indicator will depend on and what data it will use as input. In the MACD indicator, the MACD line is the difference between two exponential moving averages. The single line is an exponential moving average of the MACD line and the histogram is the difference between the two lines. All the calculations are based on the closing price of each candle. This means that all the information our indicator needs may be provided by the candles volumes indicator in the master's data mine and that candles volumes will be the main data dependency. Let's take the first status dependency, configure it as a self-reference and establish a reference to the status report. The self-reference status dependency is common to all processes, as every process needs to read its own status report every time it wakes up. I'll create a second status dependency, configure it as the market ending point, and establish a reference with the status report of the multi-period market process of the candles volume indicator. To do that, we need to find the master's data mine, expand it, locate the candle's volume indicator, and get everything ready to establish the reference. This market ending point reference enables a process to know what the daytime of the end of the market is. It will get that information from the candle's volumes indicator by reading its status report.
Now it's the turn of the data dependency. As explained earlier, it will reference the multi-period market dataset definition of the candles product of the candles volumes indicator. Notice how the data dependency doesn't have a configuration. It's just the reference. Through this reference, our indicator will acquire an understanding of the products made available by candles volumes. In particular, it will get access to the record object containing all the properties in the candles dataset. We'll get back to this when we start coding. The execution started event will reference the execution finished event of the multi-period market process of candles volumes. This is how our indicator knows when to start processing, when candles volumes finishes its job. The execution finished event is there for other bots to listen to, so we will just leave it as is. And that's it. That's the whole definition of the multi-period market process. Now, I will clone the definition and use it as a template to create the definition of the multi-period daily process. While I change the name and adjust the configuration of the process definition node, I may as well remind you that the multi-period market process deals with timeframes of one hour and above and builds one single file per time frame for the whole market history, hence the name multi-period market. On the other hand, the multi-period daily process deals with timeframes below one hour and builds one file per day for each time frame, hence the name multi-period daily. You may learn all the details about the resulting data structures in the documentation. Now we need to adjust some of the references. Remember that dependencies of the multi-period market process always point to nodes in the multi-period market process definition. However, the dependencies on the multi-period daily process must reference nodes in the multi-period daily process definition. So I just removed the reference from the market ending point status dependency and established a new reference with the status report in the multi-period daily process. Now I'm adjusting the data dependency, removing the existing reference to establish a new reference with the multi-period daily dataset definition. Good. So, now we go back to our indicator. The self-reference stays as is, pointing to the process's status report. And now, I'll adjust the execution finished event, removing the reference from the multi-period market process of candles volumes and establishing it with the multi-period daily process instead. One other difference between multi-period market and daily processes is that multi-period daily needs a third status dependency that I will create and configure, the market starting point. This one will reference the sensor bot, in particular, the status report of the historic OHLCVs process definition. The multi-period daily process will use this reference to learn the daytime in which each file starts.
okay, we're done with the process definitions. Let's move on with the products definitions. This tutorial is about building the MACD indicator with the standard settings. So we will have a single product. If you wanted to have multiple settings, you would likely define one product per setting. The first step is to name the product and adjust its configuration. Remember to follow the JavaScript convention for naming variables, starting the first word with lowercase and the following words with uppercase. And now we'll set up the dataset definitions. Pretty much like with processes, we'll have a multi-period market and a multi-period daily dataset definition. So I'll name the first node as multi-period market and create a second one for the multi-period daily. We'll get the configuration for each of those from the docs. They are quite different from each other. You don't need to customize these configs. They just work as is. Good. Now that we have our dataset definitions, we'll go back to the process definition, in particular to the process output section, and establish a reference from the output dataset in each of the processes to the corresponding dataset definition. As usual, the output dataset in the multi period market process must reference the multi period market dataset definition, and the output dataset in the multi period daily process must reference the multi period daily dataset definition. These references tell each of the processes how they must structure their outputs. In case you had more than one product, then you'd have dataset definitions for each of the products and more than one output dataset in the process output referencing the corresponding dataset definitions in each product. The final stretch in this setup is the record definition but we'll leave that for the next video that will cover the calculation and data building procedures. One last thought on what we've just covered. Pretty much like we cloned the multi-period market process to use as a template to define the multi-period daily process, the truth is we could have cloned a complete indicator from any other data mine and make the necessary adjustments to customize the clone for a purpose. That said, I recommend setting up your first few indicators manually as following the logical setup process will help you better understand how the different nodes in the hierarchy interact with each other. <laughs>